on 26 January 1950, we got a constitution and became a free republic, a free democracy. And in 1951, with the first amendment of constitution, the government took your right to freedom of speech and expression and forced you back to servitude. So Indian people were free for exactly one year, four months and 23 days. Recently, during Lok Sabha election campaign, Prime Minister Modi gave a speech in Rajasthan. It turned into a huge controversy. Now, I'm not going to get into the details of it, what he said, whether it was true or not, or the politics behind it. All of that doesn't matter. What matters is the reaction of our so-called civil society in our so-called free democracy. I understand when opposition try to disqualify a person for any reason. I understand when Congress uses the system and election commission to complain about the speech. In the end, they want to win the election by any means necessary. And it's well within their right to do that. BJP did the same thing to Congress countless times. I even understand Communist Party of India complaining about this because their ideology rests on censorship and dictatorship. And they also want to win the election. I also understand why 93 useless ex-civil servants wrote to Election Commission of India to take actions against Mr. Modi because it's in their interest politically as well as ideologically. Because their caste, their class rules this country. MLA, MP, CM, PM changes. But these people, these people remain in power in this bureaucratic managerial society. I said it countless times, I'll say it again. Indian civil service is the worst thing that ever happened to this country along with socialism. Having said that, what I don't understand is the civilians. The people of this country writing letters to election commission to take action, to punish, to censor speech. Using the law of model code of conduct, the representation of People's Act and Indian Penal Code sections. These laws, these sections shouldn't even exist in the first place. They are being weaponized to censor speech. Listen, it doesn't matter who the person is or what he or she says. An individual is only free when he has a right to say whatever he wants, even if someone finds that offensive, vulgar, misinformation or hate speech. People don't have to agree with that. They don't have to support it or endorse it. They can refute it. They can have a civil discourse about it, but they have no right to censor it. There is no point of free speech if it doesn't include hate speech. We shouldn't have any laws that prohibits hate speech. Look, hate speech is ugly. I know that. But unfortunately, sometimes people hate each other. And if they are not allowed to say that they do, well, then speech is not free. How can someone make emotions illegal? If you say something disagreeable to people, some are bound to be offended. Should you not say anything then to protect their feelings? Or should government be allowed to have laws that makes expressing your opinion illegal and they can throw you in jail for expressing it? What kind of existence is that? If everybody agreed with everything that you say, then you don't need freedom of speech. We need freedom of speech precisely because we are human and we disagree with each other. We cannot make exceptions like hate speech or misinformation because who decides what hate speech is? Who decides what misinformation is? Are we going to give more power to the government and the useless civil servants that runs it? Don't let the state and bureaucracy to turn you into animals. They are not your overlords. They are not your masters. Listen, speech is allowed to cause harm. If you criticize someone's politics, if you criticize someone's religion, it hurts them. And your speech does cause harm to that person. Same way, suppose when you are campaigning in an election, you're causing harm to your opponent through speech because you want to win. If those speeches leads to your opponent's defeat, you are causing them harm, but that's okay. You're allowed to cause harm through your speech. In the end, it's up to the voters to decide if they want to vote for Mr. Modi's party or Mr. Gandhi's party. And both of them can make their case in public through speech. After this whole controversy, Election Commission of India issued notices to both BJP and Congress for their respective offensive speeches. To be fair, I know nothing's going to happen to them. And I absolutely don't want anything to happen to them. That's not the point of this video. I'm sure nothing's going to happen to them because they are powerful men. They both hold big positions and these laws don't apply to them.
But what about the ordinary citizen? These disgusting restrictions on freedom of speech, these censorship laws have an impact on ordinary citizens. Every day, they are suffering the consequences of these colonial laws and socialist dictatorial control on speech, life, liberty and property. On 26 January 1950, we got a constitution and became a free republic, a free democracy. And in 1951, with the first amendment of constitution, the government took your right to freedom of speech and expression and forced you back to servitude. So Indian people were free for exactly one year, four months and 23 days. As a matter of fact, I'll go even beyond that and say that we Indians never even experienced what true freedom is like. We took almost half of our constitution from what our colonial masters wrote for us to keep us obedient slaves. Fortunately, we took our fundamental rights from American constitution. But like every other socialist leaning democracy, we left their second amendment right, right to bear arms and essentially left people without arms and powerless against the state. After the revolution of 1857, British did the exact same thing to us, took Indian people's right to carry arms because they knew just like they lost America as a colony, they might lose India as well. But without arms, India stayed a colony of British crown for another hundred years. Without arms, how can you protect your rights, your property, your liberty against the tyranny of the government? There's a lot of talk recently about changing or not changing constitution. What the fuck are we talking about? Indian constitution is the most amended constitution in the history of the world. Both parties changed the constitution countless times and always for the worse, chipping away your freedom one step at a time. When the socialists of our country amended the constitution just in one year and took our right to freedom of speech, they basically turned generations after generation into cattle, submissive animals. And you know what happens to animals who don't comply, don't conform? They get killed. But I'm not an animal. I refuse to submit. It's so ironic that the first amendment of American constitution guarantees the freedom of speech. And our first amendment took that right away from us. This disgusting first amendment that our first government made in the constitution that puts limitations on free speech. I don't recognize that. No government, no party, no constitution, no man on this planet can give me or take away my fundamental rights, my human rights, my natural rights. Life, liberty and property rights cannot be given by any government. How can someone give me something that doesn't even belong to them and no man made law can take it away from me. Democracy is government by the people and for the people. Government can't decide what my fundamental rights are and where they stop. I was born with these rights as a human being and we choose a government to protect us when someone tries to take these rights away from us. The government is there to protect my basic rights. It's not there to take them away from me. Why the fuck would I want a government who encroach upon my freedom? Like Swami Vivekananda said in his book Karm Yog, all religions and all method of work and worship lead us to one and the same goal. It's freedom. Everything that we perceive around us is a struggling towards freedom. Freedom is the one goal of all nature, sentient or insentient and consciously or unconsciously, everything is struggling towards that goal. So don't ever stop your struggle for freedom. Refuse the slavery and the existence of an animal without freedom. Life is not worth living. You can say whatever you want as a human being, you're free to do that. Mr. Narendra Modi can say whatever he wants. Mr. Rahul Gandhi can say whatever he wants. People are free to criticize government, religion, politics, policies, caste, creed, class, anything. And if someone takes offense, so be it. Because you can't control how people are going to take it, how they're going to perceive what you say. It shouldn't even be your concern. But do not give up your freedom. Fight for it. Refuse censorship. Refuse the conformity to these disgusting anti-free speech, anti-liberty, anti-freedom laws. I'll end this rant with a quote by Walter's biographer. I disapprove of what you say, but I will defend to death your right to say it. 